Hey guys, I am joined by the world's strongest coach, the to, the coach to the two-time world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman. Coach to Luke Stoltman, you have had an incredible couple of years with those two athletes, a number of other athletes as well, but it's a pleasure to have you on the show as always, Dan. How's things, buddy? Oh, really good, man. Uh, thank you for having me on again. Um, and yeah, I've, my, I've well just come back from a weekend in Wales, so... So I managed to clear my head from world's strongest man a little bit. I've seen you've been doing your bouldering and climbing and stuff, and you seem yeah. to you seem to love doing that just to take your mind away from everything. Yeah, it's the thing like with climbing, you only think about climbing because um, if you don't, you can like die. So you, <laughs> you you're pretty focused on it, uh, and it just take you you can't think about worlds, can't think about strongman whilst you're doing it. Well, I'm going to make you think about Strongman. Obviously, we're on here. Yeah. We're going to go back to Worlds. I'm glad. It's cool to see. I know you do with your athletes as well and yourself. And I try as well. You need to have that, that is something that you switch off from, especially yeah. when you're a pro athlete or you're a, you're in a coach for a living. You need that thing that's just for you to be able to switch off from, from yeah, Strongman. 100%. But I'm not going to let you switch off from Strongman for the next half hour or so. I didn't um, expect it. No. Take me back to World's Strongest Man this year. You know, you got to go out there with the boys this year. So, yeah. different experience. How was it being over in America? How were the guys? I've seen so many things online with everything from, the you know, Tom going to watch the football before World's Strongest Man, saying, yeah. oh, that's crazy. You shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Obviously, there was the audio leak. The, um, yeah. Very... Uh, Difficult timing, I should imagine, for, for Luke trying to prepare. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll go through the, the all the things we do wrong to start with. So okay. Tom going to the football is exactly the same as me going climbing or, you know, different Luke going in the sea for cold water stuff. Yeah, For Tom, when he's at football, he's not a strong man anymore. He's a football fan, he's a Rangers fan, he's a kid he has been his whole life. And it's a deload week, so we're not training heavy the week before Worlds. And he got he got his deload session done. Like he went to the match, but before that, he went to the hotel gym and did his deload session. He did mobility on Thursday before they got on the plane. Like it's what he'd have done at home, but he also got to go and watch Rangers, which for him is, you know, is what is where he wants to be. So yeah. And it, it worked out fairly well. Like I don't think if it was detrimental, then like you can't win worlds more. I think what a lot of people that don't that are, that aren't involved, and actually some people that are sometimes well, I've seen athletes and not I'm not talking about even elite level athletes, novice level competitions. Yeah. They let the competition consume them. Yes. In terms of their mental thoughts and their preparation. And I know from my experience, yes, you need to take things seriously. And I'm sure Tom was making sure he's getting his food in. I'm sure he wasn't getting hammered like, um, you know, maybe some football fans would be. Yeah. He's going to be there not drinking, etc. But doing something that takes your mind off strongman for 90 minutes is really, it's a very good thing because yeah. you, as an athlete, you know, you've got to switch on when you have to switch on. But if you're, if you're, it's one of the reasons I didn't enjoy World so much was because you're there on your own. And if yeah. all you're thinking about is strongman and the competition, it's mentally very draining. And having that distraction yeah. is actually a really good thing. Oh, yeah, I think it's a professionalism thing. And I've said this in various Instagram posts and things like that, that professional athletes see sport as a job. And you don't think about work 24-7. Yeah. Like you have downtime and strongman seems to be trapped in a little bit of a weird situation in sport. It's the same thing with like coaching as well. Like there's barely a sport in the world where the best coaches are competitive athletes in that sport. But in strongman, for some reason, everyone goes, well, if you've not won Worlds, how can you coach people? So, well, because they don't pay me to lift weights for them. Like, they pay me to think for them. Yeah. They've got nutritionists who do everything, so they don't have to think about food. 
they don't have to think about the competition because I'm sat by a pool in California with six tubs of tacky out finding out which one's best. It means that they're saving all that mental energy for when they have to switch it on. Yeah. Whereas I think novice athletes especially like always on. They're like, oh, we've like if I'm not thinking about the competition, I'm doing something wrong. And like even in the tent at Worlds, you know, people think it's it's a really tense atmosphere. And you know, there are a few guys who don't know how to switch off, but they're generally the guys who don't make it through the groups. Tom and Luke are napping between events. Like that I say to them after an event, do you need anything? No, nope, I'm going to sleep. And then, you know, we'd go and get a coffee and leave them to not think about strongman. Even whilst they're at Worlds, they're trying to switch off to it. Tom's watching TikTok videos and all that. There's, If you're permanently stressed about a competition, you have nowhere to go in the competition. You're like living in that fatigue. Yeah, and you see it so often. I mean, I know you do as well, and I see it all the time. And it's it's making people realize that they need to relax and, and enjoy the experience and just switch off from comp time because yeah. there's a time to switch on obviously as well i'm not saying you know yeah. you know when it's go time you have to understand how to switch that button on but yeah it's it's amazing the amount of times i've been in big shows and and either athletes are asleep or they're just joking about you know trying yeah. to stay mentally relaxed and then you know five minutes before it's time to go then they're switching on obviously oh yeah there's and, a and, big and switch and it's, it's it's quite like funny because I mean you know Sorry. me from you know me from when I was competing and how I am away from competition and yep. I was I I could be joking around with you up until just before it's time for me to go then I switch myself on and it's beating myself with a stick or whatever it took to to get myself yep. in the zone and then I would kind of come down afterwards and and people think you live in that kind of crazy animal. Um, moment and it's just not the case at all you've got it's Lalas to be joking about in the background or tom and luke will be having a joke or a rest or whatever but then it's yeah. it's understanding right now we switch on when it's time to go yeah and that's the thing like world's strongest man's not a great environment for that anyway and that's you know the issue we had with uh luke's uh 212 and then 220 on the behind the neck press was we'd flick that switch because, you know, you you know at Worlds, someone tells you, you will be lifting at this time. Yeah. And we'd said to them, like, are you on schedule? Is anything behind? Like, is everything still to this time? Like, yeah, we're on track. So we flicked that switch and we're like, you know, let's start getting 212 good, but getting that 220, we were like, this is where big points are coming in. Yeah. So we'd flick that switch to sort of be like, you hit this lift, you can then make the decision about if you want to lift heavier, let's see who goes through. And then there was a 10 minute break for the cameraman, but we didn't get told. And yes. like, it's always been a tough part of World's Strongest Man. Yeah. And then we got told, no, we're going now. Like, this is it. So we f tried to flick the switch again which is never easy. And then there was a two minute break for a different cameraman. Mm. So it, he just ended up getting that bit of cramp in his quad, which meant he couldn't fight through the lockout, but it's sort of knowing when to flick the switch. And on some occasions, like you just, you miss it. And worlds, worlds is one of those places where things just change like really quickly. Yeah. No, I definitely can. And obviously, like, you know, there, there was a lot of things said before the competition. Obviously, we spoke about Tom and him going to the football and stuff. There was the audio leak. Yeah. We need to, we need to address it because we know people are going to ask. And obviously, yeah. you were there with the boys. How did it affect Luke? Because obviously, um, you're there as his coach. You just want to keep him focused, chilled out, obviously focused on the comp, but, but not mentally distracted this must have been a big mental distraction so outwardly i think everyone else was more distracted than luke because mm. everyone went into 
almost like a pr really protective mode of like, you know, what do we do? What do we do to keep Luke fine? How do we deal with it? Luke seemed all right with it. He, you know, he was a. It's annoying. It's a really shitty thing to do to any athlete, anyway. Like the night before World's Strongest Man to do something, and for someone who can say it's hard to be diplomatic, <laughs> for someone who can say that the actions they're taking are for the benefit of the sport and the athletes to do it to one specific athlete the night before World's Strongest Man shows that you aren't an athlete in my mind because if you wanted to release something, you'd do it in the off-season because then it wouldn't affect the athlete. Sure. Like, you have people in the sport who really care about it have sympathy for everyone else in the sport. So... The timing was divisive, and there's words I can't, I won't say on YouTube because you'll get demonetized. But <laughs> yeah, it it was it was disappointing, you know, to think that someone's trying to do that to the sport. Um, but the world's strongest man crew, uh, the guys from Giants Live who are out there, you know, everyone out there just immediately went into, like, these are your options, this is what we can do, what do you want to do about it? You know, like, looking after Luke, and that's that's what people who care about the sport do. Like, yeah. as soon as there's an athlete in, like, major, a potentially really shit situation, every single person in that hotel, including 30 athletes, all made sure, you know, he had everything he needed, and then we really just left him left him to process it because it's it's a shitty situation to be in but Luke's very mentally strong he's a, such a powerful character that i think once the once the practicalities of it had been dealt with then he just processed it so yeah obviously it must um you know i know how mentally strong Luke is and the thing with Luke is he's such a well liked athlete you know um there's a lot of admiration for him and he he's so supportive of everyone in the sport that i know the other 29 athletes would have just you know had his back in that situation and i yeah. i've said this i've said this kind of on my channel i've been in that position before when you are torn between two promoters that are trying to get you to do a comp and you do sometimes i mean i don't do it anymore i sort of got to the point where I don't care what I say anymore, <laughs> but yeah. there was a time I used to think I want to keep everyone happy. It's it's very tough, and obviously, as an athlete, you've got to think about yourself and your your your, your ability to move forward. But I, I will ask you because it's just funny anyway. Was the competition fixed for Luke to, for Luke to win? I mean, if it was, they could have done a better job of fixing it. Could <laughs> <laughs> have taken Max Log and a Max Squat. Like... Yeah, I, I I kind of looked at the overhead and I was like. You'd put a max log in there for sure if you want Luke to, yeah. to win. It's funny because every year I've done World's Strongest Man, whoever ends up winning, people will say it's fixed for that guy to win. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was like, well, why did they never fix it for me to win? <laughs> I think um, it's like this thing. year, if you're being if we're being cynical about it, World's Strongest Man would want Alexi to win. Like from a international story point of view. Only sort of us care that Tom's gone back to back. Yeah. In the public image, who cares? Like people win stuff all the time. Like yeah. he's another bloke who's won worlds. And it yeah, from, take... from a British point of view, that back to back victory is incredible. Yeah. yeah, but that's only for strongman fans, really. Yeah. But globally, worlds would have won probably someone at Worlds would want Alexi to win because yeah. if they're gonna fix it, you'd fix it for the best television. One of the the awful things is that Luke's group did fall apart a bit because Evan was just nowhere near what we'd expect from Evan. Yeah, sort of. I mean it's sort of what you'd expect from Evan though, in the sense that 
he's an incredible athlete at a one-day show, but world's strongest man is day after day. And I think he's he's much stronger than he is a good strong man at the moment. And he's so powerful and so athletic. But there's events where him and Luke could have just gone, we'll beat these three guys. Let's just plod on through the event and not stress too much. But he puts a hundred percent into everything. And it I said going out, like before we went out, that if Evan can stay in control and keep himself sort of mellow, then he should be in the finals. But yeah, first event and he just sort of showed that there's something, I think it's a team thing, if I'm being honest. I think there's so much hype around him that they just need to let him nap, like go to sleep, like chill out between events. But he's pacing and he's on the whole time. Yeah, it's, I mean, we, we, we mentioned it before about just being able to to back off and, and switch off a little bit from the yeah. show. I mean, I, I've I've been very impressed with Evan, especially like you say in the one day shows. He's not yet managed to put it together, a world's strongest man. But you, you'd expect him to be seeded going into worlds based on what he does out, away from yeah. worlds. It's um, how, do you, how do you think he, as an athlete, can can step up and you know deliver what we we expect he's capable of? So I said I either said it to him or his coach when we we're out there that. Evan treats World's Strongest Man like five one-day shows. And that's not... It's, no one could do five one-day shows back-to-back. -back. No. You look at UK's people, you know, going through the eliminators and stuff like that, you're doing just enough. You need to get into the final. That's where you need as much energy as possible. That's why... You know, you make those decisions like Tom just took basically picking up the wrecking ball hold and putting it down. He could have, you know, we've worked so hard on his grip. We were sort of chatting about, do you just want to try and win it and like go all out? We're like, no, let's do the minimum. That's all you need to do. I remember, you know, people saying about Brian two years ago or Thor, you know, when, when Thor won Worlds, they're like, oh, he doesn't look good at the moment. It's like, it's the group stages. Yeah. He's doing the minimum to get through. Whereas I think Evan's trying to win every event and put a big stamp on it and show that he's, you know, going to dominate all the way through. But it doesn't work. You just burn out, like, really quick. The standard is way too high for that now. Yeah. You can't just... You're in a group with, I mean, there was how many World's Strongest Man winners in the final? You know, every group had winner or podium in it. Like, it's it's such a brutal place to be that if you're going with the mindset of a one-day show on day one, you, you've got nothing. Like, if he'd have made the final this year, I think he would have been, you know, getting no reps on stuff he could be pushing for the win for. Yeah. It, it's being calm and trusting that he's good enough to be there. He doesn't need to prove it because he's already there. Yeah. Yeah. But you could see, you could see from Tom, I mean, both Luke and Tom, but particularly Tom, he just looked in control from start to finish. Yeah. From the beginning of the group stages I mean, he didn't look like he got out of third gear in the group stages. No, he um, he didn't. It sounds bad because the other athletes are great and you don't want to sound like you're putting them down. But he just didn't try. Like he put as little effort in as possible. And that's what we discussed. It was really weird from a coaching point of view because you're like trying to psych someone up for an event but not quite psych them up. You just like... Yeah. You know, the messages we're going through is like, let's go out there and be professional. Let's go out there and do the perfect run. Let's rather than like, let's go out there and smash it and show what you can. It's like, let's just be good. Let's be a really good strongman for a few days. And the only one where we pushed a bit was loading. Yeah. But even that was relative to the group. 
like Tom was like jogging back on a couple of the implements and sort of taking his time with the pickups to make sure they were perfect. So he reckons he's probably got three or four seconds to take off his loading time just by trying a bit harder. Well, so he started, he good. started groups yeah. were good. Yeah. He, he kind of cruised through the groups, obviously didn't need to try on the wrecking ball. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you, like, what do you think of the stone off? Do you like the stone off or do you, would you rather just see six events and everyone gets to do them all through to the end? So as an event, I think the stone off's really cool because I love head to head, like who wants it more strongman, like car holds as well. Yeah. But like when they used to be at Britain's strongest man where you were facing each other. Like, I like a car hold where you can really piss someone off opposite you. I like stone offs because they're, it's just who wants it more. However, it's sort of bollocks for worlds. So you've got to, <laughs> I just, there's, I think there's a better way. I don't necessarily know if it's more sort of handicap in the stone off or if there's something I like the idea but I think the application of it at the moment see one thing that I mean hilarious. one of the reasons worlds did it was because they didn't want guys like Tom just coming and doing one stone like Brian Shaw for is a better example Brian Shaw for years yeah. he'd already qualified by the stones he'd come out put one stone up walk off yeah but all you've done is push that back to one event before where you've got now Tom just picking up the wrecking ball and putting it down or Luke not even yeah. coming out and doing it. So yeah, so to it, me it just feels like it's pushed that step an event back. <laughs> the the other thing is we don't necessarily need stones. Like in the heats, like do we need stones? I mean, like it's going to knock your arms, so hard work like I have this argument every single year. And look, I know that Atlas Stones are a staple strongman event. They're a great event. But do we need them in every single heat? And then in the final again? Yeah. I just mean, response is enough. <laughs> why not? They could have ended with the wrecking ball. Because I think yeah. that would have been sort of a good event to end on. Tom and Luke would still have been in the same situation. But it means that people are going to battle a bit more on the last event instead of. You know, there's some guys who are thinking, I'm never going to get out of the group, so I don't need to try on this event. And so we had, think, we, we had at least four guys, I think, by the wrecking ball hold that just picked it up and pretty much put it down. Yeah. And that's not interesting, really. No. So let's, there's a better way to end it, I think. So once both the guys were safely into the final, what was the game plan for you as the coach? Uh, so we had a second visit to the Boneyard on the Friday. Um, that was really just getting heights of stuff, getting everything nailed. We were doing, you know, one rep on most things or on the car deadlift, we just sort of got the lads to pull into their starting position, but not pull. Um, I think they put 120 up on the Flintstone lift did one step of the power stairs, a few steps with the yoke, you know, just to get the heights, get the sizes, and then rest and food. Uh, the other really good thing we had was Nathan was out there. So obviously he works with a lot of the guys. And I think for everyone he works with, having him actually there made such a big difference. So Tom and Luke were eating exactly what they needed to, when they needed to. So the days between groups and the final was rest and food and a bit of physio and stuff like that. Yeah. So going into event one, what did you want from both of them? What was the, cause I know you, you had had a, a plan on where you were facing. Yeah. Did it kind of go to plan? Um, it did for Tom. Like it was pretty much where we expected him to be. Uh, for Luke, it was going to plan and then, just dropping those points on the behind the neck press in a field like that, there's no room for forever at all. Yeah. Um, but it's like Luke's deadlift compared to what he would have got maybe last year, you know, hitting nine reps on that deadlift. We're 
really happy with. You know, he made good progress, but the guys who were ahead of him were unbelievable. So it just, for Tom, everything went to plan and sort of how we expected. Um, but for Luke, a couple of small mistakes or small miscalculations, and then you just don't have room for it in that field at all. No, it was a, a hell of a final. <laughs> just Yeah, it was... Yeah. I mean, I said in our, you know, the group chat that as a fan, it's it's the best final you could have wanted for, like as yeah. out world's strongest man watching that lineup. So this is this is amazing, and then you go, yeah. oh, two Stormans, right? I can't. <laughs> it. Yeah. Do you do you find it hard? Because I know how much of a strongman fan you are, but obviously, it's a stress when you've got people you care about like that, and you're working with competing. It's completely different to just enjoying the experience. Yeah, um, I I love Worlds, but I don't see any of it. I I watch the group that the lads are in. Yeah. Um, but I'm only watching it, half watching it to see where they need to be, see what points they need to be getting. I'm also watching them to make sure they're sat near a fan and they're keeping cool. You know, constantly making sure we're sipping water. Or, like electrolytes throughout the day. Like it's one year I'd really like to go and watch World's Strongest Man and just be it's the same with the giant shows, you know. I've I think I'm gonna head over to Cardiff because the lads aren't competing. Or, you know, head to Royal Albert Hall, head to shows where they're not actually yeah. competing because I really love Strongman. I just don't get to see much of it. <laughs> it's it's so hard when you're dealing with athletes because uh, or, or yeah. you're an athlete yourself. It's it's been nice for me to transition from competitive athlete to fan again. Yeah, yeah. I bet it's because uh, strongman's ace. Like I say it all the time. Like it's such a good sport. The people are amazing. The characters in the sport are great. But you know, two of my favorite sort of athletes. I tell to nap and then I walk away and get a coffee. Like yeah. you don't get that fan experience, but equally I'd never trade the position I'm in. Like both are good, but I'd like to do, I'd like to enjoy strongman a little bit now and again as well. I, I'm sure you'll get the chance, but the final was incredible and it really turned out to be a battle between Alexei Novikov mm. and Tom Stoltman. I mean, Tom in the end, a very, Comfortable win on paper. Yes. But after the bus pull, you must have been a little bit concerned. So there was like I'm super nerdy, like you know this. So so long as the numbers were still right, yeah, it's not too bad. And you know we know Tom should be winning the power stairs. He'll win the stones. Like, you know the events that being nearly seven feet tall are a, a big advantage on. Yeah. So we were sort of, you know, kept the message of just do what we do. Like, don't worry about what Alexi's done because you can't factor that in. As an athlete and as a coach, you can't factor Alexi into any plans. Yeah. Because he shouldn't, he should never win a bus pool. Like that shouldn't in the world's yeah, strongest. That, that, that was what surprised me. You know, I knew day one was going to be good for Alexi. We both, yeah. you know, we all knew day one was good for him. Day two, you kind of like, yeah, he's going to drop a few points here. And then when he won that bus pull, I was like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah, it was again. You know, historically, Tom's been really bad at bus pulls. He's sort of always been in the bottom few in every bus pull he's done. And this year, you know, we were, we were like, oh, we've, we've nailed this. Like, that's a really good pull. Like, yeah. so like, I'd be amazed if people go quicker than that. But, you know, you never say, you don't want to say that this time will never be beaten because we've seen that happen in keg toss and it's super <laughs> awkward. <laughs> um, but it said, like, you know, our message was if anyone beats that time, then fair fox to him. Like yeah. Tom put in a stellar performance, and then there was this sort of 
watching Alexi, Rob Kearney was leaning over a fence with um, his phone out with a stopwatch on. And then, like, the crowd sort of got bigger around Rob's phone backstage. And we're like, he's, he's got 10 metres to go. No, like, you must have pressed start at the wrong time. Yeah. And then he chucked the rope down. And it's only for the last few steps. But you think, like, that's not when you do that. Like, what are you... <laughs> and just, I think it was, as a performance, one of the best things I've seen for Alexis world sort of campaign I'd have took second I'd have sort of started taking seconds on day two because from that point on he was you could see that was a hundred percent effort yeah and it was incredible it's tricky because as a fan you're like every athlete should do that all the time yeah as a fan you you love you love and admire that from from athletes yeah, and it could have been anyone, any athlete in the world who does that performance. You just go, "Well, that's incredible!" Like yeah. that time, it wasn't the heaviest bus in the world, but it was a really long pull. I think it's like thirty meters. 30 it was meters. that's brutal. They're going to be it feeling was, that those last ten meters. It was. It's tricky because strongmen say it all the time, but it's uphill all the way. Whereas you know from various world's bus pools sometimes they're flat and then uphill at the end sometimes they're uphill and level off but this was a very steady but constant incline the whole way 30 meters and just unbelievable performance like it should it shouldn't happen like he's so light he's so small in terms of like build that that should never have worked but he did it, and yeah, we, we know from watching him many times. You know, he, he does some incredible things, but he did slip after that. The um, yeah. power snares and the stones not going well for him, and Tom really switching on, staying that consistent performance all throughout. And then, obviously, as we'd expect with Tom winning the Atlas Stones mm-hmm. to be crowned two-time World Strongest Man, that must have been a special moment. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it. <laughs> You you can't really describe it because it's one of my best mates, someone who I spend a lot of time with, who I get to coach, who we're at World's Strongest Man, and he's just won it for the second time. And we're there. Like, you get to... It makes me emotional now. I'm trying to keep my shit together. No, it's good, man. It's good. But, like, last year, I was crying in the garden. Like... And you feel like all you want to do is sort of hug him and say, like, you've done it. And then this year, he's just over there. So you get told off for running in front of some cameras and (laughs) trying to jump over Sinead because she had Luke on one side and me on the other. And I was like, well, I'll go high and hopefully (laughs) hopefully she survives. But (laughs) for Tom, it was... You know, the running with the stones was, it's less than we'd done in training. We sort of went by what's the worst that they could put, because we didn't know how far it would be. We didn't know how heavy the stones were going to be. So in training, we said, what's the worst this can be? Like how, realistically, how bad can they make this event? And we trained it like that. And when we were out there, it wasn't too bad. Um and then to see Alexi struggling was really hard. Uh, and then to see, I think Tom had a look at, after he'd celebrated, I think he thought about chucking Alexi's stone up, but he, I think he'd have done another full day of Worlds if they'd have let him. He was he was on another planet after that. Yeah. It, it was, it, it, yeah. His, his whole performance for, for the week was incredible. He just looked to get stronger and stronger as the contest went on. And I said, I said to you on paper, I thought Tom was the man to beat when we looked at the events. Yep. But there's still a difference between knowing you're good at those events and performing in the competition. Yeah, and he and did it. He really, he like, you can make as many arguments as you want about second and third and who should have been invited and all of this stuff. And 
should they have a stone eliminate? Like, there's a lot of arguments around world's strongest man this year, but the one thing I don't think anyone could argue against is Tom won that. Like, in a pretty, you know, ten and a half points clear at the end. What was it, in the final, was it third place? It was his worst result. Yeah, other than the uh, wrecking ball hold, third place so through the whole thing. Oh, I'm not even talking about the wrecking, you know, the the events in the heats. I'm just on about the final. Yeah, yeah, top think, three um, and everything. Top three, uh, that's that's incredible. Yeah, and that's that's how you win worlds, though. That's the thing we learned uh, two years ago when he came second to Alexi. That it doesn't matter if you win every event. If you do really badly in one this, event... This is the first year he's only won one event in the final. The last two years, he won three events in the final. Yeah, he nearly... Um, you know, some of the world's guys were saying, like, oh, if he doesn't win stones, then he's the first guy ever to win worlds without winning an event and stuff like that. I'm like, let's um, <laughs> let's just win stones, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, in, in your opinion, is he the best stone lifter on the planet? So, with Atlas Stones... He is the best Atlas stone lifter who has ever lived, in my opinion. I don't think anyone could have beat him. Like, we can say, like, 2018 Thor could have given him a run on these Worlds events, or Brian could have done this when he... I don't think any strongman ever could beat Tom at Atlas stones. When you look at the best results on stones ever with the world's strongest man stones, he now has the three best performances. Yeah, on so those stones. So, you know, he may have lost at stone, at different types of stones and stuff like that, but it, when, when it comes to Atlas stones and recent yeah. performances, he has the best three performances ever out of anyone, yeah. including the likes of Thor, Brian, Lesis, and, and all these incredible stone lifters. So I think yeah. it's, like you say, when it comes to Atlas stones, deservedly has that title of King of the Stones. Yeah. And now a two-time World's Strongest Man. The big question... Is he going to come back for number three? So, I don't know. But what I do know is he said, um, you know, he'll make it six. So, he's he's got to start doing... He, well, he's got to get third at some point. So, Well, if, if he wins three in a row, he joins Magnus Ver and Kaz as the only other two men that have won three in a row. Yeah, so that, I'll, that be... I'll maybe mention that to him. <laughs> <laughs> try and try and motivate him because I know he wants to take a little bit of time off. But I did see he's um, down to do the Giants live in Glasgow. Yeah, so the Glasgow show is it's not a show without the Stoltmans there. Like you've got to have the Stoltmans in that one. But if it's so, they've got the Shaw Classic coming up as well. Are they both doing that it's, as well? Yeah, this is their third attempt at doing it. Um, okay. You know, I wasn't sure that Tom was going to do it because I know he was talking about having some time off, but I think he's going to sort of push for the Shaw Classic and then maybe sort of taper things down, sort of enjoy the Glasgow show. You know, obviously go and give a good performance, but not go to the 10,000 calories every day and, you know, breaking his body sort of levels. He'll be a good professional strongman yeah so i think saying he's going to have a year off is maybe not the right right way to phrase it but it's a year off you know what prepping just to be backing off a little bit and just enjoying life a bit more i guess yeah, around he's not gonna as well eat so he's, still, he's still been he's still going to be training four or five times a week and yeah you know. well i think they were back in the gym today so it's it's not much of a time off. That's good to hear because I think a lot of people were like worried he's just going to kind of you know completely step away from strongman. So you can't. Not, you no. like you know you can't. Like you've retired and you. I I, I couldn't just step every back day in and, and try and compete now. You just lose too much. And yeah, you know, but that's the thing. He's just going to. I think he'll just be a strongman for a little bit and just enjoy strongman, and then maybe we'll look at. So my plan, which may or may not line up with them is to sort of have a long off season, maybe step out of shows at the end of this year, start of next year, and maybe just do one before world's strongest man for both of them. Yeah. Rather than going into the competition season. So do they you, can have you sit down with the lads and kind of like plan out 
half a year, a year in advance of, of what you're going to look to do and yeah. where you're going to get in off season, where you're going to look to peak for, for certain shows. Yeah. And then it always changes, but you know, you, you know what it's like. You can't say, Oh, I'll go to the giants live Glasgow show and take it easy. And then six weeks out, they'll both go, I want to win this one. Like, yeah. Great. <laughs> that's, that's, well, not Luke's defending plan. champion, you know, Tom's going to want to beat him. It's, yeah. You, you get that competitiveness. It comes out of us all. You know, I, uh, I've done shows before. And like, oh, I'll just go and enjoy it. And then you're there and you're like, I want to win now. <laughs> I think if we can, if we can pick and choose the right shows, I think that's, it's sort of more fair for the fans as well. Cause you don't, I think we learned from a couple of shows last year that, Fans would prefer them just to not be in it and be there as someone who... But we've not really had this level of, like, psychotic fandom in Strongman, really, where, you know, people love Big Z and, you know, these legendary athletes. But for the Q at um, the Arnold last year, for them to have had to move where they were because they were stopping the expo working like we've no one's really dealt with that so it's no, completely new for for everyone yeah so i think not doing as many shows but giving a good good outing in those is probably better than doing all the shows and picking and choosing which ones you push in yeah so sure classic glasgow they're the kind of ones to look out for them yeah, I mean, I found out about Glasgow at 7 p.m. So <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. They, they don't tell you then. <laughs> no, you like you've got you can have a good guess. Like it's Giants Live in Glasgow. Like the lads are going to be there. But after before Worlds, like uh, they had the events for the Shaw Classic. Like we don't even want to know what they are. Like, is it at World's Strongest Man? And if it's not going to affect that one week in the year, it just disappears. Like it's not, it's not considered, it's not talked about. So sort of after Worlds that sort of said, oh, it'd be good to try and do the Shaw Classic. But that came from Brian more than them. Like, yeah. you know, they're like, Brian and James were saying like, oh, we're going to, are you coming out with the lads this year? I was like, I didn't know they were, <laughs> I didn't know they were both doing it, but if I can, I will, but Worlds is everything, you know? I think, yeah, I, I think, um, oh, absolutely. When you're, their focus was Worlds, but now that Worlds is done, I think it's quite nice they're going to be at the Shaw Classic. That that will really add to that show. Yeah, I think um, Brian's doing such a good thing for the sport in trying to grow it. He's trying to grow it organically. He's trying to push for more athletes, weight classes, like female categories. He's trying to bring so much into it that it becomes a real thing. And I think, and this is purely my guess, but it seems like he's trying to create, you know, the Arnold Strongman corner and just move that, you know, copy and paste that. So it ends up as like a big show. And I think that's fantastic, especially in the States as little, there's a lot of opportunity in the States, but quite a small opportunity for the top level. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a great show. Um, I've written programs for the lads, both lads for them to do it, but we've still not really had that proper sit down. Like, you know, what are we actually doing? Tom's got soccer aid next week. Well, this weekend. Uh, so he's playing for the rest of the world. Uh, and to be honest, I think that... He's in goal, isn't he? Pardon? He's in goal, isn't he? Uh, yeah, at least for half of it. I think he's going to try and go for a run round and see if he can see if he can get past David Beckham or something. <laughs> I bet he's looking forward to that. I think that phone call probably meant as much as running worlds to him, to be honest. Yeah. He was... It's all he'd talk about on the way up. Like, like <laughs> what attempts do you think for this? And he's like, oh, if someone's made me some football boots. Like, <laughs> that's really cool, mate. But <laughs> Can we focus on this, man. please? <laughs> I think that's um, one of the, the kind of charming things with Tom, though, is he almost is like a big kid at times. Yeah. And that's he's why just, I think 
we love him so much because he's just this incredibly talented athlete, but he's got this kind of naivety about him still and this kind of innocence. Yeah, and there's no there's no false like front to him at all. Like yeah. what what he is is what he is. And he he just does what he wants. He sort of wears his heart on his sleeve. He's very open about who he is. You know, I'm sure there's hours of deleted footage from their YouTube videos of stuff they've both said. Because, like, I mean, both of them, they're just... It's not an internet personality. Like, you know, what comes across online is who they are. And it's it's just so endearing. And that's why I'm... You know, my, it sounds stupid, but like Luke's video about like the post comp blues, it's, that's it. Like, I'm now thinking about Worlds next year yeah. and that'll be it. That's the focus. Like, we're not done until they're both stood on a podium. Like, and hopefully, it, I mean, I think it's realistic. I think Luke should be on the podium. I think he's capable of pushing for a win and, we know Tom, if he isn't on the podium, something will have gone wrong. So it's like the job's not done until both of them sort of get what they deserve out of it. Well, with you by their side and the kind of, they've got a whole great team around them, to be honest. They're doing incredible, incredible things for the sport, incredible things for Scotland. Yeah. And they've got an incredible coach behind them. So oh, it's, cheers, man. it's all good. Thank you for coming on, mate. It's always a pleasure chatting. We will have many chats away from the cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, it's it's always good to have you on. I hope you enjoyed World's Strongest Man. Um, we will hopefully be out there with you next year. You never know. Yes, hopefully. There's um, cocktails and, well, we're in uh, South Carolina next year. Yeah, so it will okay. be barbecue and beers, I think. So we need <laughs> to get you perfect. out there and... We'll get you down to 120 before you go and 140 when you come back. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, going out there. <laughs> Mate, it's always a pleasure to chat to you. When you see the yeah. lads, you know, congratulate them from me. They did oh, absolutely well, brilliant. I look forward to seeing them and yourself soon. Guys, yes. the best coach in the world, Dan Hipkiss. Thank you for joining us, mate. Take it easy. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm.